sebagian besar waktu panen berlimpah. Bagian besar waktu kita mendapatkan hujan yang cukup dan tidak terlalu banyak. Tetapi tidak semudah itu. Tergadang kita tidak tahu. Our planets and our civilizations are changing faster than ever before. Join me as I travel the globe talking to startup founders using technologies to make our world more interesting, accessible and livable. These are the entrepreneurs that are creating the future we will live in. This is Now Go Build. I love Indonesia. It is a country knit together from thousands of islands, hundreds of ethnicities, speaking more than 700 languages. It is a nation of contrasts, small islands, enormous cities, jungles, mountains and farms, millions of farms. How often do we take for granted the food we eat? I certainly do. I could just walk up to a street vendor and order nasi goreng patai and not even think about where it came from. All I have to do is enjoy it and hope that it's spicy enough. But in that bowl of rice lies the engine of the world's food supply. Tens of thousands of years ago, the agricultural revolution created the opportunity for humans to build communities, then villages, then cities and empires. Eventually, the simple act of learning to domesticate grains led us to where we are now a global economy and a population of 7.4 billion. Combined, rice, corn and wheat feed 80% of the world's population. Rice alone feeds almost half of humanity. That is 3.7 billion who depend on rice to survive. Not to mention a whole lot more people who may not need rice for daily sustenance, but love it nonetheless, like me. Depending on which study you lean on, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of the world's food production comes from smallholder farms, small family-owned plots, the majority of which are in developing nations, nations where money typically has a tough time making it to the farmers. It is a hand-to-mouth world for many of them. A sad state of affairs considering the majority of people on this planet would starve without them. Enter Hara. Hara is an amazing tech company here in Jakarta that has come up with a solution. With their tech, they connect rural smallholder farms with banks and distributors of goods like seeds, fertilizer and tools. It is simply the sharing of hard to obtain data that makes this possible. With this system, good information is the basis for good credit and goodwill. In our current economy, data is currency. The HARA process is simple. The explanation of how they are accomplishing it may take a little time. Hey guys. Hey. Look, Welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. How long have you guys been here? HARA is a global and open blockchain-based data exchange based here in Jakarta. Founder Reggie Wayu and CTO Imran Zuri have come up with a brilliant way to bridge the gap between the money people, the bankers, credit lenders and others, and smallholder farmers. It's two worlds that have rarely met before now. Our dungeon? Dungeon? Yeah, because they love being in a dungeon, like dark, like this, with animation, something like that. Maybe dragons as well here? Yeah. <laughs> It is a dungeon. It is, it is, it is, it is a tech dungeon. Maybe head of depth. Hera thinks of its headquarters as the blockchain hub of Indonesia. Their work spreads far beyond this huge metropolis. Hey team, this is Warner, the CTO of Amazon.com. Say hi to him, man. Okay, hi guys. Pertama, sebelum kita, sebelum Hera datang ke ke Situ Bondo, petani ini biasanya minjamnya ke Tengkula, yang bunganya cukup besar sekali. Sampai sekarang ada hara ini sangat petani sangat diuntungkan sekali manfaat yang dirasakan oleh petani. So first tell me what does the name mean? The the name of hara. Yeah. Hara means is from Sanskrit language. Yeah. Means the soil nutrients and elements. 
When I was young, uh, like in the junior high school, I was living in the villages. That's the best three years of my life, where all my friends are farmers. The way I saw them, they're happy, but they need to be more independent. Because Indonesia, we are living in the dark world. So even though the internet penetration more than 50%, most of Indonesian ID, birth certificate, uh, death certificates are still on the paper basis. Mm. So that's hindering everybody on the bottom of the pyramid to get the financial uh, support, to getting credit, to getting loan. So that's three reasons why we develop HARA. So there must be um, a clear before and after for uh, farmers. Oh yes, uh, actually being poor is expensive for them. They do have informal financial support and they have to pay up to 60% interest a year just to get that. And then because they, they also desperately need also other support other than just uh, crop production, like for example, for education, for health, sometimes they also mortgage their, their crops before they even harvest at a lower price. So uh, by having this uh, access, it will provide them a much bigger leeway for their livelihood. By having them being visible in the system, they can have access to insurance so they have a much better safety net. So tell me a bit, what kind of data are we talking about? So basically we're collecting any ID that they have. Okay. So there are 1.5 billion people who have no proper ID in this world. By making them visible, by giving them a, an identity that they can actually use to identify themselves, then we, we can provide access to a lot within the system. Once they are visible, it's also, what is also visible is not only the farmers, but also the wives, the children, and mm -hmm. the, the, the whole family, basically. So, but you mentioned it's not the farmers themselves that put in the data. You have agents? Yes, we have field agents that uh, collect all the documents that relate to the land. So we do land tagging with a, with a simple GPS inside the app. My name is Ansari, I'm a field agent. Okay, and cool. Farmer. Cool. Mustaki, Mustaki. Mustaki. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. So the role of the field agent, he's helping the farmers to do collect uh, the data. Why don't we have a look at yeah, the, uh, In Indonesia, you know, we are so diversified. If you ask the farmers, what, uh, how big is your land? And their answers could be different from area to area. Mm. Uh, some of them will say, oh, um, my land is about 400 stones. And the other farmers, oh, my land is from that coconut tree to the uh, side of the Pretty rivers. Yeah. So the, by doing this, then we can have a proper measurement of their land. So we're going to do a polygon. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay, let's go there. Do you also collect data then about crops and crop yes. yields and things like that? Yes, so when they plant, what kind of crops they plant, what fertilizer they use, and what? when they harvest and how much that they actually selling. Mm -hmm. So the ability to scale up mm -hmm. is, is must be a big challenge because you yeah. have to recruit all these these the data collectors and yes. you have to train them. So the data collectors are not our employee; no. they are voluntarily uh, uh, sitting in, on the villages. But we design the uh, incentive mechanism uh, to make sure that they can incentivize uh, fairly uh, together with the farmers. So with every revenue that we get, we're gonna split off into this officers so we can encourage them to become data entrepreneur at the beginning how many farmers do you support tani yang saya data 175 kita melakukan pendataan menggunakan aplikasi hara kita jelaskan maksud dari pendataan tersebut yang pertama untuk uh, kesejahteraan petani so well it is great story for the farmers but you guys are building a business. Yes, yes. So how are you guys going to make money on this? Every time the financial institution, insurance company, and fertilizer and fast moving consumer goods, every time they have an access to the data, they need to pay some money ah, into, into right. that. Because, because for financial institution to really getting the verified data, and it's so expensive for them. I give you an example, one of the bank that we already working with, they save 37% of the cost of customer acquisition by working together with us. Yeah, I heard great stories about that sort of the, the loans that are given to farmers that are in your program. The repayment rate is significantly higher, or almost 100%. Yes, understand. almost 100%. And because yeah. the data is also more authenticated, and yeah. we have much lower non-performing loans. That is pretty spectacular.
So you guys, uh, technology is partly based on blockchain to, to get the privacy and the security and the immutability. Um, that for some people is often quite complex technology. So why don't we go downstairs and just uh, take a look at the tech that you have. Blockchain is actually quite easy to explain to a lot of Asian people, especially in the East, because it's based on consensus. So I keep telling them, is imagine that you are actually doing transaction from uh, someone to another person in a room full of like 50 peoples and then these 50 peoples actually record the transaction together at the same time. Uh, blockchain is about that, it's about communities. Yeah, I understand that you also have a, a, another stakeholder in this story, that is the person looking at the data quality. How does that interact with your system? So every data that is put in into HARA can be qualified by other person within the ecosystem. Like for example, uh, when we record the land, then the, the neighbors can also say, okay, I, yeah, I know that the land belongs to that person. We create a link, for example, when they upload government documents. The, so the rating is one when they have one link. When they upload another document, then the rating goes up. When they have an, a, a person, like for example, the, their field agent confirming, yes, that person do exist and I know that person, then they have another link. So basically, a lot of people also help in the ecosystem being a data qualifier. So that is part of the additional information that is being provided yes. about the original data. Yes. Di Bujonegoro, awal mula petani untuk menanam itu yang pertama ada modal. Sehingga uh, petani itu kesulitan juga untuk mengeringkan. Can you give me a bit of a view of sort of what the whole sure. piece looks like? Sure. We have a four stakeholders. The first stakeholder we call it data providers. They are farmers, database company, and satellite company who are willing to share their data into our applications, right? Yeah. Then number two, which is data buyer. This is the banks, insurance company, retailers who need and access the data from the from the ecosystem. The third stakeholder we call it data qualifier, like Imran mentioned. There are a couple of people who are willing to verify and validate the quality of the data. The fourth ecosystem a player, what we built, we call it value-added services. They are the one who can access the data and build any value-added uh, services which they can sell back to the data buyers. So this basically means that you've turned Hara into a platform where others can develop applications on as well yes. using that data. Yes, yes. This so, is not so, just selling the data, no, there's no. more to it. So tell us a bit what cloud has done for you. Uh, did you start off in the cloud? For Hara, we start from the cloud. Okay. Because we know that this is going to be a, a massive project and we don't want to have a big team. And uh, the cloud technology allowing us to focus on the business and then uh, worry less on the securities and scalability part of it. It does give me, I'm a salesperson in the company and he's a tech guy, right? So it's make me more easier to sell to the companies okay. to partnering with us because it's, it's not only the brand, but the technology is proven and mature enough for them to rely on the technology that we are building. So you, your farmers, um, are they in particular villages? Is this a project that you're running? Is it widespread? So we, we started early this year from one village to fine tune and iterate what is the best working model on deployment side. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If I show the technology in the urban area, they will say this is ugly <laughs> because the UI is not cool, right? And when we go to the farmland, you will see our thumb, your thumb and my thumb, they are smaller than them. So we need to make an icon much more bigger than it used to in an urban uh, landscape, right? So okay. that kind of adjustment that we learned uh, along the way. Yeah. Yeah. We started in one village, okay. now we have 117 villages and 400 field agents. Oh, okay. And we already uh, capture and involve uh, 10,000 farmers. Is this uniquely Indonesian or? So it is uniquely for developing countries who has a big size of smallholder farmers. 
There's 570 million smallholder farmers around the mm. world. And they are in the equatorial countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand. Uh, next month, actually, we are going to do pilot project in Uganda because Uganda has similar smallholder uh, problems and characteristics. And that's why we have another office in Colombia as well. So uh, eight countries within the uh, equatorial that become our target market okay. moving forward. How does this actually work? <laughs> yeah, so it, it is quite a, a complex thing, actually, because there are so many components in it. Okay, first we have the blockchain part, which actually record all the transactions in immutable fashion. Right? Okay. And also responsible for handling all the token transactions within the ecosystem, right? So what do you mean by token transactions? To incentivize the farmers and to give them points, we use the token mechanism to okay. actually record the transaction. Because we have to distribute the, the money automatically to all these millions of farmers mm -hmm. at the same time. And it can be quite complex. So it's actually a multi-party transaction? It's a multi-party transaction yeah. that uh, should be automated by using the, the blockchain part of it. But at the moment, we also uh, need to scale very fast. Uh, so we actually store the data in the, in the cloud. Okay. Uh, using uh, the uh, uh, cloud infrastructure. And this allows us flexibility because then we can use blockchain for recording the transaction but not storing the information. Okay. Uh, so it, it makes it easier. But we store it in an encrypted way and the hash we store on blockchain. So we make the database also immutable by facilitating by blockchain <laughs> okay. indirectly. But also there's a, also a big component in there, the analytic services. Mm -hmm. which is uh, also quite complex because we have to do a lot of image processing for the applications and we also have to do a lot of fraud detection for the, even the qualifiers. So the analytic services is quite important, important. and it's, it's also have to be uh, mm -hmm. scalable to a certain degree. And then the other part that's very important is the security layers. In blockchain, it's, it is secure, but in other parts, the, we have to link both worlds in terms of its security because there's so many moving components in here that needs to be secured. So basically using blockchain as a distributed ledger, it's not that you are running this in a decentralized fashion across in, let's say, in the field, but you are, all your blockchain parts run in the cloud as well. Yes. Uang yang kami dapat dari bank, hasil kerja saya mahara dengan bank tertentu, kami pergunakan untuk pertanian, artinya persiapan sebelum bertani, yang pertama, yang kedua untuk pemupukan, untuk cabut rumput, sampai digunakan untuk saat panin, yang pertama. Yang kedua, uang yang kita peroleh dari bank ini manfaatnya ke petani sangat luar biasa, So you guys run your blockchain based on Ethereum, that's one of the, the, the blockchain technologies out, out there. Um, did you make changes to the protocol or is that uh, just purely uh, vanilla Ethereum? Uh, at the moment we are running on a private Ethereum using proof of authorities, mm -hmm. but because it is practically a side chain, so we have to build a lot of the other supporting yeah. uh, 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 technology on top of it ourselves, like the block explorers and things yeah. like that. And also because we need to uh, speak to the outside world, we have to create our own cross-chain uh, uh, module that allowing us to work from our private Ethereum yeah. to the mainnet. Okay, interesting. So you guys need to develop a lot of additional technologies. Yes. Blockchain still is, or Ethereum is still pretty low level and coarse grain, but just to make it usable, you need to do a lot of work. Yes. I understand that many of these farmers do not have bank accounts. So how do you incentivize them if you cannot put money in their bank? We're using the point system, so whenever they share the data, they are able to redeem some points and this point can be used for the uh, redemption in the fertilizers and some uh, pop and mom shop for uh, a staple good that they, they need uh, okay. on a daily basis. They see uh, the point system is really working, especially for the housewife of the farmers. Mm -hmm. Because if we, early days we give a money to the farmers, yeah. but the money that they received were not coming back to home. So they use it for <laughs> buying uh, something for the farmers themselves. When we introduce the point system, the housewife can use it for something useful for their family. 
As humans race forward with new advancements in technology, finance and agriculture, there's always the risk that the little guy and woman get left behind. In a region where more than half of the economy relies on such people, leaving them behind is a non-starter. In fact, reaching all of those farmers, shopkeepers and tradespeople is where the opportunity lies. Can have some nasi, please? Thank you. Yeah. It is exciting to see more entrepreneurs founding technology companies that look beyond just profit to the impact that they can have on people and the world around them. Companies like Hara, combining a strong technical knowledge and a passion for making a difference, great things could be afoot. When visionary thinkers understand the people, the problems and the technology, the potential for solutions becomes endless. It is just the type of thinking we need today.